views and opinions expressed by Rob Black and his guests are not necessarily those of the Wall Street Business Network, this station, its management, owners, or advertisers, and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investment advice. Always consult with the appropriate advisor before making any investment or financial planning decision. Insightful. Informative. Irreverent. We're ready. The Wall Street Business Network presents Rob Black and Your Money, your source for breaking news, market updates, and successful investment strategies for the 21st century. Sounds like a great program. Getting you to retirement in today's market. So let's get on with the show. Taxes, family finances, insurance, the economy, technology, media, and entertainment. Rob is talking about it with you at 800 516 1220. So call in, we'll chat and uh, have some fun. Now, to start your day with the latest news and market commentary, here's Rob Black on the Wall Street Business Network. Welcome in, Rob Black and your money. Talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Thanks for listening to the show. I do appreciate it. I want to do more of a strategy hour this hour, in large part because the daily news we can do back of our hand Monday through Friday, five days a week. Um, The analysis on it, I know I bring something value added to it, but let's take a break on occasion and try to, you know, get some of the principles back to where we need to get them so that we are learning together. One of the things I throw out there is there's a phrase called asset allocation. And it's something that very few people think about. Asset allocation is probably the most important issue to think about when creating wealth. Most investors spend zero zip, not a nothing on it. Maybe they have a brokerage account with 10 tech stocks. And they love each and every one of those 10 tech stocks. And they think they're geniuses because they own Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, Google Alphabet, Netflix, Apple. You get kind of cocky. You get kind of arrogant. You're like, I'm going to own Qualcomm. And then you get kind of cocky and you go, I got an email from someone yesterday who bought three China stocks, stocks that are in China. Not knowing, him not knowing that there's a lot more risk because of that. Um, and that's a little bit unfortunate. So there's risk that he does not understand on currency risk. And on top of that, you could probably say something along the lines of political risk. You know, will a Republican get along with the Chinese? Will a Democrat get along with the Chinese? Will a domestic agenda take over? Will we delist? Will we threaten companies like TikTok and say, we're fearful that you're stealing information from unknowing Americans and we're going to shut you down? So he didn't understand the risk. And he was like, his email to me really upset me. He goes, I'm trying to make up for lost time. Okay, that's a big strike right there. He's betting big. And then he's like, I'm, I bet on Chinese stocks that are electric vehicle stocks because I saw how well Tesla did. He's never been to China. He doesn't know what the currency is in China. He doesn't know who the leader of China is. He doesn't know. He couldn't find the companies that he's buying on a map. He's never used any of their products. He's never seen their products on the road. If I want to buy Tesla, at least I want to see a douchey person driving a Tesla around town kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Same thing could be said on, on real estate. If you're going to buy you know, rental property, you may not want to buy it in Kentucky where you never go to Kentucky. You may want to buy it in Bakersfield where you can stop by and see it on your way to the beach in L.A. I'm not telling you to buy in Bakersfield. I'm just saying it's, sometimes it's nicer to be able to check out the stuff that you own. Are you with me or against me? Because this is a civil war and there is a right answer. So a lot of people own 10 tech stocks, not realizing that when they start buying an 11th stock or 12th stock, they're really stretching. What they were really owning is 10 big brand name companies. And that there are 10 companies that have had the greatest 10-year run in the history of 10-year runs. Very rarely do companies that have 10-year runs or sectors that have 10-year runs do it forever and ever and ever. So at some point in time, 
and again, there's the guy who's the big super Oakland A's fan who emailed me recently. He turned five thousand dollars of Apple into about three hundred thousand dollars of Apple. He bought in the nineties. He was good for him. Now, when it's a two trillion dollar company, you have to say, I've had a great fifteen year run. Can I expect it to continue or should I sell out at lower tax rates now because a new administration may make tax rates higher? Do I start diversifying or he's gonna ride it? He's got one pony. And he's riding it all the way to retirement. I've read a lot of bad literature on asset allocation that encourages people to put their entire portfolio in stocks. I've read a lot of bad literature that says even growth stocks. Um, because they simply return the most. And it's sexy owning Apple. I own Apple. It's my largest holding. I'm guilty of not asset allocating correctly. It's hard to poke holes and people who have been winners until it's not. Again, I'll bring it up. Sony once was Apple. They had movies. They had Walkman. They had the best devices. They had TV. They had computers. And I think their product was probably better than Dell and Hewlett Packard's. But <laughs> along came Apple and away goes Sony. People have it wrong about risk-reward is what it comes down to. People target returns in their portfolio without putting any thought into risk. The man who bought the three Chinese electric vehicle stocks, it's been a roller coaster for him, and it could end up in it going to zero. People get an idea into their heads that they want their portfolios to return better than the market or double the market or better than a typical tech stock and we want the supercharged Google. I get it. I get it. Instead of targeting returns, you should target risk once you have wealth. Once you have something worth losing, you should start managing risk just as importantly <clears throat> as you do managing returns. You can achieve a healthier portfolio by buying less risky stocks if you want to stay all in stocks. But you're still subject to a stock market drawdown that could last three years in a bear market. Keep in mind, our last bear market lasted what feels like three days. <laughs> it was more like two weeks, three weeks. But it was a brutal 20% drawdown that led to 30% drawdown. And we're like, whoa. And it was fast, and it was almost over as fast as it started. But if you were in stocks, all your stocks were down. If you were in bonds, you were sideways. If you were in commodities, you might have gone up. In this case, you probably went down because it was a recessionary bear market tied towards demand, not tied towards valuation. Well, that might have been tied towards valuation. So do you want to own a non-risky stock? Like... Let's just say a Home Depot versus a Google. Google, the senators are like, you are stealing people's information. You are a bad, bad company. You're doing evil. Or do you want to own a Home Depot? Home Depot is not going to get you the returns Google does. Or may I go as far as say, why don't you own a 3M or something that you know, makes sticky notes? But a lot of people won't do that, and I get it. It pays to understand there's five types of investments. Stocks are the easiest to understand. Stocks go up, stocks go down. Not too hard. You own a piece of a company. You become an owner in the company. Stocks are very linear instruments. Bonds, they're a little bit more complex. I don't invest directly in bonds. I let other people do it for me. And right now, I own no bonds. But for diversification purposes, as I get older, and if interest rates go up, I'll be more inclined to use them. Real estate is another asset. I probably have four to five million dollars. I don't know how much I have in real estate because it's not liquid. What I paid for it versus what I could sell it for now, but what can I sell it for in the future? I don't know. I don't have a lot of hard commodities, but I should. You know the fifth asset that I want you to think about? Not baseball cards. The fifth asset I want you to think about is cash. Cash isn't a bad thing to have on hand. Stash it in an app called Stash.
Find me online at robblackshow.com. Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union. With 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs, visit ProvidenceCU.org. Now back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black. On AM 1220 KDOW. show. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. I do wildly appreciate each and every one of you. And telling friends about the show does help. I try to do a show dedicated to getting you to retirement. Today is one of those days where I'm doing a lot of tips and hints and tricks. I think the best piece of advice I can give is something along the lines of max out your 401k. It can earn you serious money, but maxing out your 401k might not be realistic. Every now and then radio, I get to work with an elderly man. He's not an old man, but he's 50 plus. And every now and then I get to work with a 25-year-old and a 35-year-old, and I see we're all very different. For the elderly man, I'm most concerned because his time may have passed. For the person in 25, 35, I'm like, Hey, when you're 25, just put 3% of your money into a 401k. And if the company's doing a 3% match, woohoo, that's a good enough start. Next year, go to 4%. That 401k is how you become a millionaire if you're an average person. To max out your 401k in 2020 or 2021, the limits change every few years 19,500. If you're over than 50, you can do an extra 6,500. So that gets you up to 25000 Who has an extra $25,000 lying around? I, I hope you do. I hope when you're 50, you've, you've raised your children or you started late, which is okay. We, we are a nation that has started later. Suppose you start maxing out your 401k, though, at 25 instead of 35. Your investments, your investments grow at 8% a year. If you've paid bi-weekly, that means you're investing $750 every two weeks. After 20 years and five months, you become a millionaire. And how much are we talking about? $375 every pay period, $750 every two weeks. What are we talking? Um, It takes some time to become a millionaire, and it takes a significant chunk of change. You can't say, I'm going to invest $5, and I'll eventually get there. You're going to need to up your game. $2,000 a year is $166 a month. $2,000 a year equals $10,000 after five. You kind of can do the math, right? <clears throat> How about if you do $5,000 a year? After five years, $25,000, and then you kind of can do the math. <clears throat> it becomes prohibitive when you're needing to put forty, fifty thousand dollars a year in to become that millionaire. When you're younger, it's a lot easier to pull off. But then again, your peak earning years in your forties and fifties, you probably should be getting rid of a kid by your fifties. They should be going off to college. So the four hundred one K, is it realistic to max out? I say do the best you can. I round up Acorns into investments. Acorns is an app. I use credit card rewards on my cash card. I've got a city double cash. I invest that money. So if I pull $5,000 out, I put $5,000 in a a savings account, typically some growth stocks. If you're living on an entry-level salary, max out your 401k is not realistic. I get it. But the way to do it is say, start with 3%, go to 4% next year, go to 5% the year after. You won't be missing that 1% in theory. How much should you contribute to your 401k? A good goal is to aim for 15%. For 2020 and 2021, you can contribute $6,000 if you're under 50. $7,000 if you're 50 or older. If you have additional money to invest, you can put it into your 401k. I'm good with that. So Roth IRAs are important to fund if you meet the threshold of income. 
there's a conversion of a regular IRA to a Roth that gets a little bit trickier. You should listen to CFP Chad Burton on Roth conversions because that's when you start messing with taxes. And I've learned a long time ago, never mess with taxes. And I just say never mess with taxes as well. Texas and taxes off limits. They got guns in Texas and they're not afraid to use them. Don't mess with Texas. So a 401k is going to be your best opportunity to become a millionaire, in my opinion. You can go say, but Rob, 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 I'm, I'm going to use a real estate investment club that talks about unlocking my secret wealth, my inner wealth real estate mogul. All these concepts were based off Trump University. Let's get people together. Let's tell them we can coach them through it with mortgage lenders. And we can find properties in Kentucky that they want to buy. And the developer in Kentucky will give us a kickback because no one in Kentucky wants to buy it because it's in a seedy part of town. In California, we're just like, oh, we want real estate because California real estate's been so wonderful for us. So we'll buy real estate in places like Kentucky. doesn't always work out terribly well for you when you do that. But a lot of the concepts of like real estate clubs, you have to be very cautious with because what they really are is a wolf in lamb's clothing. What they really are is we're going to teach you how to lock, unlock your inner Trump or your inner real estate developer, or your inner uh, landlord, other people's money, OPM, which is pretty different than OPP. Now, you know me. I'm not going to say that one out loud because I will get fired. But be careful on like the real estate club because what they typically is is someone who is moderately successful and they want to teach you how to do what they've done. And typically they know the business partners like a mortgage lender or a real estate developer or a real estate agent and they're getting kickbacks there. They're not making their money on the real estate. They're making the money on you doing transactions in real estate, which is very, very expensive. So be very careful. It is very dangerous out there to try to create your own wealth through simple shortcut taught classes or universities. Trump University was a, not a scam. But a lot of people lost a lot of money thinking they were going to become millionaires, and they never achieved it. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing more. Find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. comments and questions are always welcome. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. And yet I've made myself noticed in the workplace. I did that as a focused strategy of getting ahead in life. I didn't want to work till the day I died. I saw my dad do that. I know that I'm introverted. I can work in radio in a studio by myself. And instead of paying a therapist, I could talk about my issues on radio. I take a lot of pride in putting together enough of a show that it's infotaining. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. To be a member of the 10-hour club would be kind of crazy. I'm all about the side hustle. I get it. When you go to college, you should deliver pizzas or be a, a waiter on Fridays and Saturdays at the best restaurant that you can work at. And then you'll fall in love with other students who have a work ethic like you do. I don't know. I'm a little bit goofy in the way I think. There's a guy that I like enormously. And his name's Scott Galloway. I think you should find people who influence you. If you're influenced by Joe Rogan, I'm, I feel bad for you. Um, you're basically a lowest common denominator. And again, 
I probably just pissed someone off who has a gun. <laughs> I'm not Sorry. trying to piss you off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but like Scott Galloway is someone I will go to a YouTube channel and tonight if I'm bored and I don't really want to watch another whatever I'm watching, I'll go educate myself a little bit. I have some go-tos. He is a entrepreneur, author, professor of marketing at New York University, Stern University. Um, I think he writes a lot of great books. I think he writes some pretty crappy books, to be honest with you. I like the Wall Street Journal. I like Barron's enormously. If I had to live between Barron's and the Wall Street Journal, it's going to be Barron's. I like uh, the New York Times. I like the Financial Times. I don't like the LA Times. I don't like the San Francisco Chronicle. The Washington Post business section's okay. There's no other newspaper in the United States that I turn to. But I want you to have the ability to look at good thinkers. And Scott Galloway is great at marketing and media companies. He could talk about the success or failures in the past from like an AOL and compare them to Facebook. He'll talk about Facebook versus Google. He'll talk about Apple versus Amazon. And you're like, wait, wait, Apple's competing with Amazon? On some levels, yes. So Scott Galloway is someone I, I like enormously. And one of the things I've seen him talk about a lot is Amazon. And his understanding of marketing companies and media, I feel, is insightful. Since I have an investment in Facebook, I want to pay attention. Since I have an investment in Amazon, I want to pay attention to anything he has to say. I don't want to fall in love with a Wall Street analyst. I kind of want to mix the Wall Street analyst with my own common sense and my own experience with someone like Scott Galloway who can kind of give a different perspective. Amazon is uniquely positioned, he says, take on one of the biggest issues in America, healthcare. True. When I was growing up, my father was in the military, so I got military dentists who weren't great dentists. <laughs> I kind of feel like they were the, the Christmas special, the, the elf. Ooh, the elves are always like, uh, you should be an elf and make toys. And he goes, but I want to be a dentist. That's probably the most absurd Christmas special I've ever seen, that one. The Land of Misfit Toys was sad. The fact that he takes all the teeth out of the abominable snowman is, is mean and cruel, even if they're rotten. But Amazon's uniquely positioned to take on healthcare. It's got a vaccinated supply chain. It's got a massive collection of data. Amazon can tackle several healthcare related spaces, including insurance, financial cost, platform, and innovation. Bezos' decision to spend billions to ensure the safety of supply chain stems from a vision that's obvious only to a crazy genius. I think he's a crazy genius. I think he, when Steve Jobs died, I said a couple weeks later on the air, Jeff Bezos is the new Steve Jobs. He's the 21st century Steve Jobs. For lack of a better turning of the screw, Microsoft isn't innovating anything great. Apple seems to evolve very, very slowly. There's no revolution going on. Amazon snatching profits from the, sh from the jaws of everyone out there, and they're reinvesting in the firm. No firm other than Netflix has Wall Street ever given so much runway to. Maybe Tesla? You can lose as much money as you need. Just show us revenue. Those three companies, we believed that concept, and it paid off gloriously because all three of them have very strong CEOs who had a vision. Bezos, Jeff Bezos is watching you. He told investors that $4 billion in profits that they were expecting would be reinvested. And when he was talking about it, he was talking about COVID-19. He outlined a vision for at-home COVID tests, plasma donors, PPE equipment, distancing, Additional compensation, protocols for a new world. Amazon is developing the Earth's first vaccinated supply chain in his mind. That's great strategy. And it's something I, I give a tip of the hat to, that the CEO is talking about PPE for his employees. Distancing, additional compensation, plasma donors. 
at-home COVID test kits. Scott Galloway said, I believe Amazon will offer Prime members testing at a scale and efficiency that makes America feel like South Korea, which is the most competent country in the world at testing. He wants the testing to be safe as possible, creating a more muscular and immune fulfillment organism. Can you imagine these terms? I want you to have someone like a Scott Galloway that you pay attention to. I want you to have a Barron's that you go to. If you have a brokerage account with Fidelity or Vanguard or TD Ameritrade or Schwab, they probably offer you free research from Standard & Poor's or Argus or The Street. Read a research report. Some of the Standard & Poor's research reports are 20 pages on Amazon. And I always find something in there that tickles me. And by tickle, I mean, I did not know that. That's kind of cool they're working on that. Leadership is the ability to convince people to work together in pursuit of a common goal. I think Bezos has it. I think I have it on this radio show. I'm showing you leadership of getting into retirement, and you guys have stuck with me for 20 plus years. Soon to say 25 plus years. The big payoff for Amazon is the healthcare sector. The pandemic has accelerated the company's inevitable move into the space. I'm glad that they've done it. Amazon's core skills is that they've got a massive amount of data. It uses that data to pick off the profitable parts of businesses and farm out the less attractive ones. When a couple of years ago, we heard Warren Buffett's working with Amazon and working with, I think it was Goldman Sachs, to come up with a better health care for their employees scenario. It's like, finally. It's like, just because we watched Little House on the Prairie and Laura Ingalls was in a school church K through 12 environment where she's learning with her little sister and her big brother. We don't have to keep, keep the school model the same. Now, again, we don't got to go all Betsy DeVos and change everything up all crazy. But there's got to be a better way to skin the cat of education. There's got to be a better way of skinning the cat of health care. When I'm 19 years old and I bust up my knee and I don't have health care, I shouldn't have to go, how much are stitches? Because I didn't know. We got phones now. There's a great app called GoodRx, which Amazon's hurting right now because Amazon said we can give you prescriptions at way cheaper than CVS or Rite Aid can. And GoodRx is a great app at telling you, hey, you can go get your Viagra at CVS because we know you're going to have a big zesty weekend. But you may want to get your blood thinner over at Rite Aid because it's way cheaper. So we saw a spectacular IPO called Lemonade in 2020. It's a disruption opportunity in the insurance field. Consumers, by and large, dislike and distrust insurance companies, and I agree with that. For good reason. The insurance industry is a bloated industry. It's protected ultimately by inefficient state regulatory schemes. It's got entrenched relationships. It's fat. It's slow. And for a company like Amazon or Lemonade, who could be predators, they're ready for disruption. Amazon knows more about their customers than anyone else, in my opinion. What we eat, what we exercise on, do we have video games? Do we have children? Are the children in our relationship? Are they downloading books? Are they listening to books? Are they playing games? How much we're willing to pay for groceries? How much we're willing to pay for convenience and delivery? Amazon gets the gig workers. They get the gig economy. They get the freelancers. How much would you invest in Amazon finding a better healthcare solution versus our healthcare system currently? And that's what I love about a Scott Galloway is he will drill down on these conversations and they may have no merit, but if they do, holy mackerel, you just got a nugget. And who doesn't like nuggets? You know, there's only four shapes to nuggets, and that's upsetting. And if you ever watch nuggets get made, it's even more upsetting. But they do taste delicious. They taste delicious in Paris, France. They taste delicious in Bangladesh, India. They taste delicious in Paris, Texas, right? Consistency wins a lot of battles. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. Find me online at robblackshow.com. Carry our safe to shore. 
Though the truth may vary this Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union. With 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs. Now, back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black. On AM 1220 KDOW. Black and your money. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Thanks for listening to the show. If you tell friends about it, that would be great, but no pressure. I want to get you to retirement. I use a very odd number in my head of $1 million because that was the first number I came up with when I was 18. I know you're saying when you were 18, you were thinking about retirement. I was. Essentially, I saw my dad kind of work too much and I didn't want to be that person. So I came up with a number in my head of $1 million. That should be enough so that I could live from age 60 to 100 and I, I should be able to provide for a person. When I was 18, I wasn't thinking about having a kid. So that changed my plans pretty dramatically. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. And I think that's Something worthy of note. One million suddenly is not enough. It's not even close to enough. So then I changed the number to two million. Now I have a sugar booger, someone I could love and spend the rest of my life with, and a child. And I'm like, is that enough? And the answer is not quite. Not for my current budget. For my 18 year old budget, it was more than enough. For my current budget, not quite. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about money, investing, and more. Find me online at robblackshow.com. So my retirement number went from $1 million, which would pay me essentially $40,000 a year. But that was when bond rates were at 4%, 5% interest rates. I can't get that now. So I'm going to have to look for ways of replacing. I have to be dynamic. I have to go, well, maybe I'm going to have to come up with an income portfolio of stocks because the bonds aren't there to pull on it. It's just being honest. When interest rates get higher, I I can dedicate more towards bonds. But when interest rates are this low, it's, it's very difficult to achieve my goals. So maybe I change my number to, uh oh, three million. $1 $1 million is going to pay me 40000 back when I was 18 years ago. Now it will probably pay me about 25000 And yet things have gotten more expensive. So I'm not really keeping up with inflation on that number. So my budget, I'm going to have to be a little bit tighter in retirement or I'm going to have to have a lot more BS money, so to speak. It's less than ideal. Things change. Understanding the five basic investments of stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, and cash, it's pretty important. When you put them all together, they start working in the right direction. And you can have a liquid goal like $1 million turn into $2 million because you got a spouse. Or $2 million turn into $3 million because interest rates are low. Or $2 million turn into $4 million because you have a kid or two. A kid's not free. From zero to 17, they're $250,000 plus. If you're going to private schools and stuff, they're going to be more expensive. If you're doing hand-me-downs and getting stuff at thrift stores, maybe a little less expensive. College is going to be another $250,000. So a child is a $500,000 decision, essentially. So you can see how my $1 million became kind of silly when you have two kids. That's $1 million between the two of them, getting them off to college. And then you get the low interest rates, and you're like, poop. I can't pull off what I wanted to pull off in income, so I'm going to have to go with more growth. And kind of write it out until income gets back to a nor- more normal environment. You know who's been the biggest loser from 20, 2000 to 2020 plus? It's old people. They used to be able to keep cash in a bond or a CD. They could put money in a CD. 20 years ago, I was talking about laddered CDs. You haven't heard me talk about laddered CDs in years because I'm not going to live off 0.5% interest in one year. Or a big fat 1% for a three-year 
tie up of your money. No, it's not going to keep up with inflation. But 20 years ago, it was a viable strategy. Slattered CDs as income. A lot of seniors that I know used it. Now it's just not as, as now it's more like I want forty to $60,000 income in my stock portfolio that I reinvest or that I could draw upon. It's a little bit different. So you got to be able to move with the times. You got to be able to be fluid. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing and more. When we go through a bad period on Wall Street, you'll be happy that you have bonds You'll be happy that you have gains built up in stocks and real estate. You'll be stoked that you don't have to read about real estate prices on a daily basis of how much your home is worth or not. And you do with stocks because the market opens and closes every day. It's priced daily. Your home is priced, what, 20 houses sold in a year in your neighborhood? And how those 20 houses did kind of affects you because it's all about square footage and how close you are to jobs and schools. It's really not about your gold toilet. I've pooped in a gold toilet. It's pretty cool. I left the poop sitting in it. Ah! I think that was a statement of mine. Of like, this is what I think about wealth. I know you're saying you're making that up. I am making that up. What is the but matter with you? Stop it. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. Uh, money investing and more it's okay if you overinvest, but there can be a point of overkill. I keep talking about getting you to retirement. Uh, 23% of employees enrolled in defined contribution plans have too much equity exposure. That's pretty interesting, according to Fidelity. That yes, you can put too much into stocks. And today we're talking a little bit about stocks, bonds, real estate, and cash, and commodities. Uh, Commodities can be tricky. I'd prefer you go with an index fund versus individual commodities. I don't want you buying individual stocks like Exxon. But commodities as an index, it can add some value, especially in tough times where inflation's growing faster than your stocks. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. Views and opinions expressed by Rob Black and his guests are not necessarily those of the Wall Street Business Network, this station, its management, owners, or advertisers, and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investment advice. Always consult with the appropriate advisor before making any investment or financial planning decision.